Okay, gang, so another functional group we can make from carboxylic acids um, is something called an acid anhydride, okay? So let me kind of show you what that is first, and then we can basically go through the mechanism, and I think you'll be excited to see you already basically know it. So I'm going to use a little R group notation. So, right, this would be a carboxylic acid with, you know, an R group, right, terminal, uh, carbonyl with an OH. If I were to replace this hydrogen and I drew a line, right, this would be an ester, a continuation of the carbon chain. However, if I do something like this, you know you have an acid anhydride if you kind of have carbonyl, oxygen, carbonyl. It's almost like you smush two carboxylic acids together. You'll kind of link them together. And no surprise, if I show you the word formula on how to make an acid anhydride, that's exactly what you do. You smush two carboxylic acids together. And let me show you an example reaction because I think that will make it a little bit more clear. And honestly, when I draw the mechanism, I think you guys are actually going to be kind of pumped. And I know it sounds nerdy as hell, but it's very similar to what we just did. Okay, so let me just say we're going to take acetic acid, two carbon carboxylic acid. Sorry, I keep saying that over and over again. You know I like to be completely transparent with you. But we'll take this. I'm going to add another acetic acid. Right, so I don't really have to put anything over the arrow because think about it. Two carboxylic acids, we are in an acidic environment, right? But if you want to be completely clear, you can draw H plus or H3O plus over the arrow. What you pretty much do is, again, it's a condensation reaction. You link your carboxylic acids together. So if you think about it, it's like you take one of these OHs and this H, aka H2O, and you wipe them away and you smush them together. But that's enough talky-talky. Let's do a little bit of error drawing. Also, I apologize for using the phrase talky-talky. Anyways, so let's see how we do this. Again, first step here, because we're in an acidic environment, we have these oxygens, the carbonyls, right? Carboxylic acids, not very reactive. So we need to protonate them. We need to activate our carbonyl. So let's do it. I'm going to pick one of these carb uh, carboxylic acids, and I'm going to draw hydronium, grab H+, plus. just a simple protonation step, I know you guys are pros at that, I'm sure you honestly have nightmares about it from our days back in carbonyls. Okay, protonate the carbonyl. Now think about it, not only in this case is this acetic acid our substrate, but it's also our nucleophile, right? And I'm going to, if you look at our product, right, this is the oxygen we're going to attack with. So I'm going to draw this over here. Okay. All right. So let's go in and attack with this oxygen. And when I do that, right, I'm going to kick these electrons up. Otherwise, we will break the octet rule. Okay. So drawing the result of that. This is going to get messy, so bear with me. All right. Draw my two carbons. I'm going to draw my OH that I did not touch over here. I'm going to draw the OH that results from this electron kick up this way, off to the left. Okay, I'm going to draw this big mess going this way. So remember, oxygen directly attached to this carbon right here. Oxygen, he's attached to this carbon and the, the two carbons and the double bond on oxygen. And that one hydrogen floating around, he has a positive charge. So this is the addition part of this addition elimination mechanism. All right, let's play the same game. We want this OH to leave in this molecule. We want this piece to stay. Protonate who you want to keep, deprotonate who you want to leave. Right, so let's protonate him, deprotonate him. I'll have water, pick him up. I will have this oxygen pick up H plus from somewhere else. Right, again, to be completely uh, clear and a little bit redundant, that's the plus H plus minus H plus step. 
So what does that do for us? Let me draw this over here. I didn't touch the OH going off to, up into the left. The OH down on the bottom right is now OH2, aka our good friend, water. Up top, right now, I just have oxygen, and he's just attached to this piece up there, as you can see. Okay, hope you're still with me. So, this was our tetrahedral intermediate, right? So remember, we added uh, a piece and we formed our tetrahedral intermediate. Now we need to collapse our tetrahedral intermediate to do our elimination step, this addition elimination mechanism, right? So, I'm gonna reform our carbonyl, swing these electrons down to form a double bond. That's gonna be the driving force to pop off this water. A good leaving group, right? That is our minus H2O step, right? And so what that leaves us with is, right, I'm going to draw a line, double bonded O. He still has an H attached to him, but that's okay. That's a quick cleanup step. And then I'm going to draw him to, down to the right. But think about it. The oxygen and this carbon piece over here, right, looks a lot like our product. I just made water. I'm just going to use him to do the cleanup step. So again, do you see how similar this is to the ester mechanism? Pronate the carbonyl. Attack with your nucleophile. There's your tetrahedral intermediate. Protonate who you want to keep. Deprotonate who you want to, sorry, deprotonate who you want to keep. Protonate who you want to get rid of. Sorry about that. Collapse tetrahed tetrahedral intermediate. Form a double bond. Kick someone off. Clean up step. And honestly, in the next video when we do formation of amides, you'll see it's the same thing. Alright guys, let me erase this and then we will wrap it up.